Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the YouTube. It is your boy, The Real AE. Welcome to The Real Vision channel. Today, we're gonna to be having a conversation of getting your money up. Before we begin, if you guys loved the last YouTube video, definitely comment down below your favorite part. Also on this, like and subscribe and give your boy a shout out as we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. So I'm excited for today's conversation. And the title of the video, as you guys can see, is Get Your Money Up. Now, at the end of the day, this could be particularly towards fellas, but ladies, if you do enjoy the conversation, there could be some good nuggets for you in here as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Getting your money up is not what we think it is all the time. And I'm gonna add a perspective, my own perspective of getting your money up. A lot of times we listen to the music industry of getting your money up, whether it's slinging dope or it's you know selling drugs, prostitution, whatever. And then we talk about in the corporate world, uh, another way to get your money up is, you know, getting hired, you know, getting promoted. And are those ways to get your money up? Absolutely. But we also have to think about the magnitude and the practicability of somebody actually getting promoted and actually somebody being successful and slinging dope, getting more money, making more, you know, making music and getting drugs. That is a very small percentage of people that are able to climb those ladders or able to achieve those marks because a lot of times in social media, we get convoluted into the idea that it's, it's possible for everybody. And truth be told, it's not. Not a lot of people right now are very comfortable. A lot of people right now are struggling. And we have to understand that getting your money up is not just a, an idea that you need to be pressured on. It was pressured onto you because whether the standard of dating, the standard of living, the standard of social norms is always on the move, you have to feel like getting your money up is the only way to keep up. In today's lesson today, I want you to get from this video is that you don't have to keep up. I just need you to be aware. So getting your money up in this kind of conversation, I'm gonna talk about keeping what you already have. Managing what you already have can be a great form of getting your money up and I'm gonna explain why. A lot of times people right now cannot tell you what's coming in and what's going out. They can tell you how much they're getting paid every two weeks but they can tell you where all their money's going, whether it's subscriptions, whether it's for food, whether it's for, for drinks, whether it's for rent and utilities. And we understand that, yes, inflation is a thing. Yes, life is getting hard. Yes, things are getting more expensive, but those are anomalies that you can't control. You can't control inflation. You can't control the gas prices. As an individual, as a, corp as a, <laughs> as a conglomerate, as a people, we could if we all decided to do something together. That affects the market, but as an individual, specifically to you, do you have control over inflation? No. Do you have control over the gas prices? No. Do you have control over the food prices? No. But you, what you do have control over is the expenditures of the money that you're making leaving your household. You do have control over that. There are certain things that are, of course, your baseline needs. My father likes to call it baseline needs. Roof over your head, clothes in your bath, food in the fridge, and gas in the car. If you wanted to add that in there. Those are baseline needs. Then you have what we call like your second year needs. Like these are vital, but they're not deadly, right? So let's say you have children, diapers, baby food, daycare, et cetera. Not even daycare, but let's some kind of caretake. And let's say, but I want to speak towards more young individuals. I'm 25, so I want to speak on us a little bit. At 25 years old or roughly around the 18 to let's say 30 year old range for, these kind of, for this kind of conversation or anybody of this range can, you know, reflect to this. We understand that rent, utilities, and let's say your phone bill. Those are things that we need to know. So write out those needs. Like what we call non-negotiables. You have to pay rent. You've got to have gas in the car. You've got to have X, Y, and Z, right? I'm not going to say clothing. I'm not going to say groceries because groceries is adjustable. So I don't, don't get it confused. Clothing, food, that kind of stuff is adjustable. So even subscriptions, adjustable. Those are adjustable things, meaning that you can change how much you spend on those items and you have all full control of what kind of food you buy and what you subscribe to. Non-negotiables is this number is not controlled by me. I have to pay it. So your phone bill or your rent, for example, list that kind of stuff out, write it out and look at it and you'll be surprised. Okay. I'm making this kind of kind of income. And then I have these amount of non-negotiable expenditures leaving my home, leaving my home. That is going to be a very good ground level start of understanding your money. I did this. I had a bad relationship with money for a while, probably run around from age 20 
all the way to 22. And since for the last three years now, I've been very comfortable of what money's coming in. Am I happy where I'm at? No, that's a different story. But understanding what I had coming in and controlling it and managing it and I want to say budging it, but just having a grasp of it allow me to get my money up because now I was able to experience more life, whether it was going to parties, whether it was going on trips, whether it was going to trying different foods, but I was able to experience these things. But every time I did come home, I'm not mentally exhausted or losing sleep over dang, I just went to go see the brand new Barbie movie and now I don't got m- enough money to film, you know, put water in my fridge. That is where we get, that is where I'm coming with getting your money up is understanding what you have in your hands to control. So step one is write out all the non-negotiable bills that you have to pay and everything else can be adjusted. Your subscriptions, what you're subscribed to, whether it's, you know, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, those can adjust. What kind of groceries are going, what kind of groceries are going in your fridge? You can adjust that. Why? Maybe instead of going to Albertsons, which is a grocery store here in Texas, you now can go to Walmart. Or, you know what, instead of me buying a case of water, I'm just going to buy a gallon of water. And then when I go to the gym, I'm just going to refill my gallon. Right? These are adjustable things that we can do. And it allows us to be less frustrated when things that we want to do come up, whether it's a concert, whether it's a thing. And here's the thing that I also want people to understand. There is a big societal pressure of keeping up with the norm. And nine times out of 10, people who are experiencing life are coming back home super frustrated but they want to keep this persona of image that they're financially okay. And there are a lot of people, and don't get me wrong, that are doing exceptionally well. There's a lot of people doing exceptionally well. But a majority of us are struggling with inflation. A majority of us are trying to manage our bills, are trying to find every last dollar. We're looking for different ways to make money online. We're looking for different ways to increase our income. Like, COVID was a great example. What, like, imagine... Your baseline income is clipped. And COVID was a great example of that happening. A lot of people resorted to online. Online businesses searched, right? Because when you understand that your baseline is clipped, nothing else matters. So right now, when you have the ability where your baseline is secure, when your baseline income is good, your nine to five check, you know you got it, you know you have it, this would be a great time to understand and manage it and get it under control Know what you have, know what's coming in, know what's going out. Mathematically figure that kind of stuff out. I'm not asking you to be to be an extreme cheapsake, right? Like some like one of the shows on TLC many years ago. I'm not asking you to be extreme, but be diligent, be observant, be aware. Because now when things come your way, when policies and economic stuff that's right from politicians and from the president and from the Federal Reserve and from all these in war and all these different things start flying into your life and you don't have control over those big name topic issues that people complain about and you got to make financial decisions for yourself and your household, you don't even flinch a muscle. Why? Because you understand what's going on. You understand, okay, maybe I just got to make a little bit of shift. Okay, maybe instead of me buying LA Fitness, I'm just going to get Planet Fitness. Same gyms, they might not have, they might not have a sauna, <laughs> right? They might not have a sauna, but yeah, I can still get the basic workout and get the basics needs done. So now when I have something called discretionary income to be able to sustain the lifestyle that I, that I have, now my discretionary income, my play money, my fun money, that allows me to go out and do those things. When I come home at the end of the day, or I come home from a long, a long night, or you wake up drunk, or you wake up hungover, or you wake up from whatever, from the night before, when you wake up in the morning, the last thing you wanna be worried about is, damn, I missed my phone bill. Damn, I missed this, and damn, I missed that. So guys, getting your money up in this today's age is not about just acquiring new skills. And we're gonna have, I'm gonna talk videos about how to acquire new skills and do stuff like that, but if you're not in a position to acquire a new skill, if you feel deflated, if you feel pressured, or you feel like there's this outside force telling you, I need to keep up, I need to do this, I have to do this, I have to keep an image, I have to keep this persona, trust and believe right now, no you don't. You don't need to keep a persona, you don't need to keep up with the masses. Be aware of what's around you, but you don't have to engage. Sometimes, sometimes right now, you just need to be financially observant. Instead of being a financial spender, not, maybe not even a financial investor right now. Be a financial observant. Observe. Watch what people are spending with their monies. Watch what you're spending with your money. And understand how that flow comes in and it goes out. 
And I guarantee if you try this out for yourself, try for three months, three to six months, you'll be surprised how much calmer you are knowing that you have a full grip of your finances to the best of your ability. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you enjoyed today's content, all of my social medias are down below. I love making these videos. I can't wait to make more more with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. It's been your boy, The Real AE. Welcome to The Real Vision, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.